we are going to be tackling the question that we have gotten most often since we bought our boat three years ago. Which one is more expensive to own and operate? Staying on the path that I've chosen straight up. Come my way and I'll see you at the top. So, we bought our bus conversion in 2011, almost eight years ago, I think now. And we got it off a of storage oh, nine years ago. Nine years ago. We got it off a of storage lot where it had been sitting for years, and we got it for a song, uh, basically just $8,000 um, for a drivable, livable bus, but it was way behind on maintenance. So... Then we got the boat in 2017, so just over three years ago, and now we split our time between the two. And we finally have enough numbers to be able to do a little bit of comparative analysis, but this is really comparing apples to oranges, or pears, or bananas, or something like that. Or, or apples to pineapples, spaceships. or spaceships, or I mean, <laughs> there's such different types of vehicles. But I guess when it comes down to this, all the same dollars. And so we could talk about that. They're very different vehicles, but you pay for them with the same money. So we could share about how much it's been costing us to keep both of these vehicles healthy and maintained and on the road or water. And livable. And livable. And we're going to talk about the ways that we use each vehicle differently. Uh, when we're, we're going to give you some monthly numbers, and these are calculated on their in-service months. So the months that we're on our boat, we're not counting. We're not counting that into our bus. Bus time. In our bus months, we're not counting to the boat time. All right. So first category that we're going to go over is fuel costs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, our bus is a Detroit diesel 8V71. It is a two-stroke diesel engine. And we typically get about seven to eight miles per gallon. And it makes such a sweet purr going down the road. Not the most fuel-efficient vehicle, but it's a bus, you know. Yep. And the boat... We have dual Cummins 370s engines. They are also diesel. And we've been getting about 1.8 miles per gallon, which sounds horrible in comparison <laughs> to the bus, which sounds horrible in comparison to, say, a Tesla. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But, but you know, now when you factor in, like, particularly when you're looking at boats, you often factor in not the, the miles you travel, but that number of engine hours operating. And... Because the speed difference, it's actually the engine, the, the boat, and the bus use about the same amount of fuel per hour. Which is around the 3.2 to 3.4 gallons per hour burn rate. So to operate either, it's actually around the same cost per hour. It's just we get less miles done in the boat than we do on the bus. But we're not in a rush to get <laughs> anywhere. So, um, yeah, that actually re really works out pretty well. So you yeah, I've got some numbers that I've calculated. So in our uh, 75 months of operating our bus over the years, we average about $250 per month in fuel. And in a typical year, up to date, up to, until about 2016, when we really started focusing on boat living, uh, we were traveling about six to 8,000 miles per year. Now on the boat, we have been uh, getting about $160 per month average for fuel costs uh, in the 29 months of operation that we've had on the, the uh, boat since that time. And we typically in the boat only do 500, 750 miles per year. We're not on a fast pace. And going forward, our bus miles should be similar because we're gonna, be, we're gonna be very regionally based in the winters out in Arizona. Right, and and the, it's, it's just, that it all comes down to the pace that you're moving with the fuel. People think, oh my God, it costs you how much to fill up your tank? Well, how often are we actually filling up our tank? And it happens every several months, if that, you know. Yeah, and actually what we typically do, so it doesn't feel as bad at one hit, is uh, we can carry 440 gallons of fuel in the boat. But we typically fill up when we need about 100, 150. That kind of takes the sting yeah. out of a big fuel fill. And we always have a full tank. Yes. And so people always think, oh, my God, you've got a bus, you've got a boat. The fuel is going to be such a big expense. But fuel really is not a major consideration, a major expense, the way the style of travel we do. 
and I think we spend more on beer and wine. We probably, oh, I'm <laughs> certain we do. Certainly, much more important, much more critical expense. That might be a future video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, for fuel, we have done a video in the past and a whole blog post on fuel costs for full timers and how we really equate that to pouring rent into the tank. Uh, if you want more information on fuel and the things that can change, we even have a calculator that you can use there to estimate your annual fuel costs. Um, you can go and look at that as well. Okay. Next up, we're going to, to dive into the the you know the cost to park, basically the, to to camp or to dock, the the expenses that we're paying to stay someplace, and how they compare between the bus and the boat. Yep. So also keep in mind we treat each differently. When mm -hmm. we are traveling by bus, uh, we do a lot of boondocking. We do a lot of shorter term stays in national and state and county parks where there might be a two week limit, but we can only get a reservation for three or four days, three or four days yeah. of a week. Um, so we're not doing long stays because on a nightly basis, RV camping is not as expensive. When you move over to boating, it's a different ball game. Um, yeah. So yeah, bo with, with, <laughs> with boating, Nightly stays can be very, very, very expensive. Monthly stays can be extremely, relatively cheap. And then also on boating, you have a lot of opportunities for anchoring out, like we're doing right now, where you know you, sometimes you don't have quite as many opportunities for that sort of thing with a bus. So these bus totals, or RV totals, are based upon doing lots of boondocking and then stays of maybe three to seven nights at a time in RV parks, paying a nightly or a weekly rate. When we're doing the boat numbers, this, our typical, if there's a typical, <laughs> is we'll cruise for two or maybe a week or two, do a lot of anchoring out as we're cruising to our next destination, and then we take a monthly rate. Uh, so this is how it, it has all played out. So number-wise, um, for the bus, over the course of our uh, 75 months in service, we've been averaging $350 a month for you know, basically camping fees. Uh, we're up to about $740 per month. Um, and we have a whole video on marina costs and we do some comparative there to RV costs as well. Uh, go look at that if you want to see how marina costs break out. But our typical monthly rate at a marina has been anywhere from $600 a month all the way up to $1,400 a month. And all it's all about location, 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 <laughs> and services. I would say a typical marina cost is more around $900 per month. This has been about our median. So the average of $740 is taking into account all that anchoring out time yes. that we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, then another just kind of comparative expense would be uh, the insurance costs that we're paying. And, and of course, insurance is highly variable upon several factors. Your driving history, your boating experience, uh, where you're keeping your boat is a big, big difference in insurance costs. Uh, and we choose to keep a policy that covers us in Florida, which is a prime hurricane zone, because we spend a lot of time in Florida. Yeah. Um, our boat, sorry, our bus insurance costs averages out to be about $160 per month, and that does have a full timers coverage policy on it that gives us personal liability and contents coverage for personal effects. And then the boat is about $312 a month. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's negligible. Now we're paying both all year round, uh, and those are based upon service months, not actual months. But we've, we're factoring out by service months because we do split our year, but we do have to pay. Do you have to pay the full year? Full, full year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so. Right. It's just how much use we're getting out of it. And now, now on to the, the real tricky thing in the place where it's the most apples and pineapples and so different to compare, but we're going to try is the maintenance costs, what it costs to keep these vehicles going. Now, again, we are focused on the mechanicals of keeping the motion. This is not including any of the maintenance costs on the household side of things, which is going to apply to any vessel. Um, so on the bus, remember we have a 1961 vintage bus that we bought that had been out of had not been maintained in over 15 years when we got it. The tires were literally rotting off of it when we first moved in. Um, the engine was old and in unknown condition. So much the rubber was rotted and many things. You know, we had a lot of maintenance to catch up on. It was amazing it was drivable that first day. <laughs> right. So over the years, we've spent about 50 grand on 
getting the bus up to road worthy and make, keeping it there. That's including two new sets of tires now that we've owned it long enough to need a second set of tires. Uh, it's maintaining all of the, the brakes and joints that have had to be replaced and valves and things like that. Uh, the average cost has come out to be about six hundred and seventy dollars per month for service month on that yeah. to and maintain the bus, and that includes a full engine rebuild. Yeah, that, that, the big thing was when our engine blew up and we had to spend eight weeks living in a, a shop at Billings while we literally took the engine apart and rebuilt it from the bolts up. So it had one very huge um, thing there, but you know that now that the engine's rebuilt, it will hopefully last another fifty years. Hopefully, yeah. um, a typical engine service on the boat, however, has been anywhere from about $300 to $500. You mean to, the bus. Sorry, the bus. <laughs> Just, uh, Because it's so much easier to do over a pit or with a lift to, um, and with the proper tools that we don't try to do too much of the, the big heavy maintenance on the bus ourselves. It just hasn't been worth the effort. Um, but we do a lot of the little stuff ourselves. Right. Um, so yeah, that's about what it costs to maintain the engine. And then there's always something breaking on a 60-year-old vessel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> now yeah. the boat we purchased it was about 18 years old when we purchased it it had been maintained by its prior owner so we weren't facing the catch the boat up on everything yes. uh, factor yeah. on that um, but we have two engines to maintain so a lot and they're big big engines and so there's a lot to maintain and then things that are sitting in salt water the things age a lot quicker on a boat so there's there's significant maintenance keeping 18 year old engines going right and the things and instead of tires to replace we have to have the bottom of the boat maintained yes. so paint it has to be repainted every couple of years you have to when you're in salt water you need to have the bottom cleaned about every four to six weeks when you're this far south yeah. and stuff grows all over it uh, so our cost so far has been about twenty five thousand um, dollars in Maintaining the engine, we've had two major services. Uh, we had the turbos rebuilt, and we had the after coolers uh, taken off and cleaned and rebuilt, rebuilt as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. uh, those are major maintenance items. Yeah, there are many, many years between them. We just needed right. to get caught up. Right. So that comes out to about eight hundred and fifty dollars per month per service month for us so far. Um, now, <laughs> the engine maintenance itself, the oil, the filters, there's uh, zincs or anodes that you have to put into the engine, uh, impellers belts and air filters as well, the transmission oils and things like that. We've now had three major engine services since we've owned the boat. First one, we um, hired some local uh, local mechanics who kind of taught us everything. And, and came on board. Came on board, did the service for us, but also showed us how to do the service. And total with their, their fee was like $800 to come in. It was about 12 hours of work to, to maintain the engines, mm -hmm. of, to do it your, of labor. Um, and all the parts, the, the oil, the filters, and zincs, yeah. and everything else. It was about $2,000 in total for that first engine maintenance. And there's a lot of training involved in that. <laughs> the second one, we did ourselves. Yeah, so, so. We, we, we bought the oil, did, got the, did the impellers. Um, did the impellers. I sprayed my hand doing the impeller. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, we did all the, the work, what we learned the first time. We did it all our own the second time around. So no labor costs except for <laughs> our own blood, sweat, and tears and loss of work time, which yeah. does have its cost. Yeah. Um, but it was a great learning experience, and it was great. To, it was a great confidence boost to know that we can do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so it was about five hundred dollars in parts. I think that we calculated. Parts and oil and, and we had yeah. a lot of leftovers from the first ones. We overbought on the first one too. Yep. So this last time we just had the everything maintained when we had got the boat out of storage in. Uh, Savannah before we came down here. We had them do everything. We thought it was worthwhile uh, for a professional to look over everything on the engine every so often just to make sure everything is looking good because we're not professionals. <laughs> we're not experienced mechanics. And it was about $3,000 to have a boatyard do everything. And But that also included them doing the belts, which we had not done prior. Yeah. So a lot more pricey to do it that way than doing it yourself. And you know, we'll probably balance it between mm -hmm. um, doing it ourselves in the future and uh, when it's appropriate having somebody else do that and particularly work if we're gonna have them tackle another bigger task because like they were taking off the after coolers and things like that that are stuff that we would not attempt to tackle on our own I mentioned we've done the after coolers and the turbos each of those jobs cost about thirty three hundred dollars we hired both of those out with mechanics on board um, and then we've uh, two, we've had two bottom jobs done so basically having the bottom repainted one we had it stripped 
down to the hull and resealed uh, just so we knew what we were starting yeah. with. And then the second time was just a recoat, you know, cleaning and recoat over it. And each of those is about $4,500 to $5,000 to do. Bottom uh, paint's a lot more expensive than bus tires. <laughs> yes, and you have to do, well, bus tires, usually around $3,500 yeah. to 4000 to redo all six tires. Yeah. Um, and they don't have the wheels inspected and everything else. Um, but we only have to do that once every six to eight years. The <laughs> boat, we have to have the paint redone typically every two years, uh, especially when we're running in salt water. Here in fresh water. Should last longer. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. And so, yeah. And that's... then there's cleaning. There's yes. cleaning oh, yeah. the hull. When, yeah. when we're in salt water, stuff grows, even with the paint. And you have to hire a diver because that's not something we want to do in grungy alligator infested water. And we have, if we were in the Bahamas, maybe we'd clean our own bottom, but not. The not, not, in the ICW, not in the ICW. So you, have to, you have to hire a diver to go down in the black water and scrape for an hour or so and get your bottom clean again. And they usually charge by the foot and we found the rates anywhere to be $2 to $4 per foot for a diver to do that. So for us that costs anywhere between $100 and $200. And we're typically been finding because we stay a month in the marina, we just have it done before we leave the marina and for our next cruise. So we got a nice fresh bottom because that really actually impacts your fuel economy. So it pays on fuel economy to have your bottom clean. And your speeds as well. Yep. Um, so we're typically doing that about once every six weeks the way that we cruise. So I think those are kind of all the, the big <laughs> items. If you want to break the numbers down, so it's just to yeah, so total, bottom line it. So total for service months, the bus has been costing us about $1,400 a month. And the boat's been costing us about 2000 So yes, the boat is more expensive. <laughs> but I don't know. The lifestyle is also yeah. awesome. I mean, I know they say boat stands for break out another 1000 Not true. It's break out another 10000 but yeah, we would, I mean, these, these would be less than the expenses we'd be paying for, uh, uh, certainly for the kind of apartments and houses that we've had in the past. So, you know, yeah, it's, well, you know, yeah. this isn't including utility. Well, it is including utility. Yeah, it's this, got this, camped off these. So. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, so, um, yeah. The, the, so, so overall, I mean, this sort of lifestyle is, is not outrageously expensive. Like some people think it is. It's not super cheap either, but you can make it a lot cheaper if you, do a lot of lot more stuff yourself. You invest your time into that and your skills into that. But um, absolutely, and keep in mind that's not the household system. So yes. putting new canvas on or replacing fixing the plumbing, fixing up plumbing or electrical work, doing upgrades. We do a lot of upgrades. So you know the actual costs are a lot higher when you <laughs> you figure in house systems. But everyone has house systems that you're upgrading. Even on, that's why they call house systems. Houses have them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, basic living costs. We have a whole post where we have shared our monthly costs um, ever since I think about 2009. You can find that at technomadia.com slash cost log. Uh, if you want to go and go deeper into a lot of the other things like health insurance and connectivity costs and a lot of the other things that play into life on the road. Yeah. So anyway, hope this was useful or at least gives you a data point. This will be completely different for any vehicle you who own. Because every boat's unique, and our RV is certainly unique, and all vehicles are kind of come out differently. But at least you have some data. Hopefully, this was useful for you. All right, and of course we also have a van. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, set. which is the cheapest of all of them to run. Uh, <laughs> so it gets about sixteen to seventeen miles per gallon, and it just its uh, annual maintenance is about what you pay for a car. So yes. it's uh, pretty cool. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so we know this is going to be a hot topic, and we will probably schedule a live a YouTube event with a Q&A shortly after this video goes live. So do check in the description. I'll put a link down there or check the channel itself to see if that's scheduled. We'll try to do that a day or two after this video goes live. Okay, take care. We create these videos just for fun, and we love having you along for the ride. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.